That, okay. That aside, there is one other thing I've been thinking about. Hmm? Like I said yesterday, the biggest issue with presenting the evidence is honestly going to be the public. Clearing Raquel's name publicly is going to be an issue because if you tell the public, oh, you are wrong about this person, even if you present evidence that they were wrong, they're going to continue to stubbornly believe, no, no, this person was guilty. This person was guilty. Indeed. How a person is a person is smart. People are dumb, stupid, panicky animals. However, there may be a way to actually use that to our advantage. What we need is to give them a new scapegoat. Give them a new source of their ire. For example, you tell them Raquel was innocent all along and you were wrong, they'll do it actually what I just said. But if you frame it as the captain of the guard framed an innocent child and has been covering it up for years, suddenly the public is gonna start going, oh I knew he was the bad guy all along, I knew it, I said it from the start. Was he covering it up though? He didn't know about the plants, as far as we're aware. You I'm know. not entirely sure that's not the case, given what Adrian was mentioning a sec before. Okay, I said this to Adrian, then it bears repeating to the rest of you who weren't there. Don't you think it's a little bit suspicious that the asylum never once even considered the idea of mind-altering substances. I can understand if it was something raised, but no, but was dismissed for lack of evidence, but it wasn't even raised. It wasn't considered, it wasn't checked for, it wasn't investigated. Uh, DM, you roll a, uh, eagle or something back in order to see if, um, sort of, Lucinogenic drugs would be on a forensic radar, or how common it is? Uh, that would be, uh, one second. Probably illegal, right? Yeah, that would be illegal lore. Roll a 12. I know, I gotta see- I mean, I gotta tweet. <laughs> it's just like I'm I'm scared because we haven't seen a single twelve all session. I know, and that's like like uh, they're just waiting. They're waiting for the for the combat thing if we have one. All right, so you do know that uh, checking for what's uh, checking for that sort of thing um especially in uh an asylum they do check if you they they do like blood tests and stuff to check if um you might be sneaking uh, some chemical salts in order to uh affect your mind stuff like that so if she was committed to the if she was committed to the as asylum or given an uh or t or sentence for sent second degree murder. It's a, that's the sort of thing that they do check. So mm. it was, so it was checked. It was checked. It, it well, it should have been checked at least. Okay. Uh. Well, either it was something they didn't really take into account due to her age, because you know. Seven-year-olds aren't usually one to hit up illicit substances. Unless you're in Brooklyn. Or Huh. <laughs> or, um, or it had flushed out of her system by the time they ran tests. Or, or, they just have, because this is a new plant, they didn't have a test for it. I or they just didn't do the test because somebody wanted a, somebody wanted an immediate uh, accusal. I'll look to ask the doctor all those questions. <laughs> Thank you. Something else. Something else that bothers me. That bandit leader, he he had far better equipment than a bandit should. And also, he knew about the plants. 
that was why was that? That was why I was asking Flint to check if there had been other people cutting the plants before. There was a possibility, especially since several of you brought up organized crime, that uh, there may have been people harvesting those plants earlier. Uh, okay, as for... The drug um... ring. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Based on my knowledge, I don't think... Uh, that would be Underworld, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, but there's a 12! <laughs> it is! No. It it's begins! Long enough. And Ellie just turned into a telephone. Shut up! It's an Ellie phone. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Ellie phone. I right. hate you all. Oh. Boop, boop. <sighs> all right. So, um, you do know that there is a bit of a, uh, you, you do know that there is a bit of a black market for items, at least in the UAA. You'd be surprised if there weren't a, a black market for, uh, like, military gear in the Eastern Dominion. You're not 100%... It's like, you can't 100% uh, you, you confirm it, but, yeah. Military gear or drugs, dear? Yes. Um, um, well, with drugs... I'm oh, sorry, I misunderstood... I misunderstood the question. Uh, uh, for drugs, um, you do know that drugs is a is part of uh, many criminal underworld organizations' uh, trade, but uh, the ones that you're familiar with, it's not the thing. It's not their most preferred method. Uh, and okay, so anything uh, that has to do with hallucinogens. Nothing with these kind of symptoms that Adrian has disclosed to me? Uh, no. It could have been a recent thing, but that's... But considering that Flint found no recent signs of tampering besides our own, leads me to doubt that. My point was, I agree with Hoshimi to an extent. It, my first... That, that does seem off, and my first guess was maybe this was an organized harvesting of a criminal harvesting of the plants and the drugs, but that didn't seem to be accurate. It is possible that he may simply have been lucky enough to acquire the uniform of someone, the uniform of a soldier. After all, you there are more. I think more soldiers lose fights to a random drunkard swing than they do to a practice strike because you can't predict the crap fighters. The thing that concerns me though is that sort of sword is mostly used by Urzaban soldiers. How even if what you say is accurate, that's an awful long way for such a sword to travel. From Urzaban? I'm from the UAA! Well, yes, but he's a bandit. It could have been the sword that traveled a long way, not the bandit. True, but... But... I'm, but still, it's something to consider. I agree. The... There are... Uh, there are more innocent... Le there are less alarming possibilities, yes, but you are correct. We should consider... What actually... Actually, that is a question. What should we consider? You are correct that these do raise suspicions, but precisely what do we have to go of to even start looking into it? Well, well first things first, I think we should examine what if this is a new plant... Um... We definitely should. Oh, sorry. I should probably get close to the mic here. <laughs> um, well, if this if this is a new plant, we should at least study how it actually works. What part of the what well, part of the plant uh, gives off its hallucinogenic features? Like, if we're comparing this to say, you know, halfling weed, is it going to be from the stems or the stems of the seeds, or it comes from the flower? And and then I'll see if we can if I can compare anything uh, with uh, with similar symptom with similar cases that happened down at 
the asylum, especially if, um, especially if these rage-induced uh, acts are, are a common occurrence. I am of two minds of this. I mean, on one hand, we do have the time to do all of this, but on the other hand, I kind of think you all are trying to solve a mystery without having all of the information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <laughs> following a few clues will get you to more information. But I would, but honestly, Rames has a point. I would like to, I would like to dig around and see if we can find anything else out before we take any further action. If you don't mind, I agree with your assessment mostly. However, there is something I'd like to speak to you about. I'd like to speak to you personally about later before I go to speak to Karshez, if you do not mind. Who are you speaking to? Hoshemi. What? Just a thought, if you don't mind. Um, alright. Now, Hoshemi has a really, confu a really confused and surprised look on her face. Alright, and, uh, while it... Alright, so... Uh... If it's all the same with you, I would like to speak to uh, Officer Edgeworth. Um, he pulls out a he pulls out a stack of papers. I'm trying. I need to file a motion for appeal, and uh, the process is going to be a little annoying. First, we're going to have to do a pre uh, a preliminary hearing, then an actual hearing, and so I would like, since you're the only one around here with law experience, I'd like you to help me fill these out. Oh. Also, something was said earlier, and I have a bit of a confession to make. Hmm? I realize now that I, I, I hadn't realized it at the time, but perhaps I was treating all of you a little bit too much like a means to an end. Lieutenant? It's... We're all in agreement that we do not like Captain Akalon, right? Fairly. Oh, actually, I was going to get married to him tomorrow. Did you hear those... Didn't you see the flyers? <laughs> I don't think you want me to voice my opinion on that man. He wasn't always this bad, but... Just as the years have gone on, he's... He hasn't broken any rules, technically, but I don't trust him as a leader. So I have been looking for opportunities to present to authorities above the core guard that he is not fit for his post. That is why I went to school, so I could become an officer. That is why and I... Why you wanted I... some glowing recommendations? I'm sorry that I used you. If it's any consolation, at least I, I at the least, very least, was using you as a means to an end, too. So, it right. no resentment on my end. It still doesn't make it right. Well, if, uh, if what we've done with Shailene and all the others is any indication, it all, everything starts well when you, the first thing you do is apologize, which you're doing right now, so. Right. <laughs> He wasn't always this... He wasn't... Again, he wasn't always this bad. He was a great... He was great back in his day. He was, part, he was the reason I joined, but... I don't know, just seeing him fall so far, just... He's been... Just consumed by this. Did it... Uh, just, Lieutenant, did it have to do with... What happened with... Uh, Raquel? 
it was that I mean I wasn't I wasn't in the guard when he when all of that happened. But I did know about him. He was he had a very good reputation. And you know, it's a yeah, you know, you know how it is. It's like sometimes uh, like a a, a cop uh, or a guard or a guard does something nice for you when you're younger. It's, and you, you kind of see them as a little bit of a hero. It's like he kind of did that to me. Just, I don't know. It's just as time has gone on, I've seen I feel like something else took his place. I'm not entirely sure that's the full story. You obviously know him better on a personal level than I ever will or really want to, but during my investigation, something that came up was he and his son, or shall we say, not on the best terms even before what happened with Raquel. In it, fact... Yes. It felt like something was... Hey. has come over him? you say? Feels like it. Um... Hmm. So, um, we met a ghost? Huh? Yeah, uh, we met a ghost and we kind of identified him as his dead son? So, um, that might be something to think about. <laughs> uh, a little uh, is going through like a whole gamut of emotions right now. Like, is she effing with me? Wait, no, she's not the type to F with people. But how is that true? She wouldn't lie to me. Like, she's not that kind of person. Like, but why would she? What? A seven and Sybil talk to him. It's true. <sighs> there was a ghost of his son. It was an interesting night. Yeah. So the uh something came over him hypothesis may not be too far out of You think he was haunted? This is mm. okay. I I'm sorry, this is really strange. It's like the logical part of my brain is saying I should believe you, but the logical part of my brain is also saying I shouldn't. Uh, I mean, we have eyewitness reports of people who have gone directly into the fires of hell itself. I don't think we shouldn't be being skeptical about the afterlife. He has a point. That, that is a really good book series. Have you guys read Han um, Regent Hannah Wormwood's biographies of Bator? You should keep focused, detective. Hey. Started it, never finished. Started it, hadn't got around to finishing it. Been slow with the book slightly. But that... Here... You're saying it was Petro that was... A ghost, mm -hmm. just around the area. I agree, isn't that what happened? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. What? Hang on. If. But then, if he was flying around the area, then what was he? Why did the captain never mention that to me? He felt either he deserved it, or that was the only way to keep his son around. But how did no one else discover that ghost? It's, a, it sh it's been years. I think the ghost only appeared to the people it wanted to appear to. Or perhaps, and he gives a quick look at Picria, the person... None of us would have been able to see it at, in that case. I suspect that it appears to exactly. those. Who, I suspect that it appears to those who want to help Raquel. I'm not sure. It was. 
going after Picria, it didn't... Yes, it appeared before us, but I think we just happened to be in the right place at the right time. We were lucky enough to be in its presence when it I... manifested. Shylan, you're misunderstanding. I think that that spirit, its sole, per its sole, its sole desire is to help her. That was what it said to us, after all. And I did see part of its memory. Remember, Touche. Again, I think we're. Right. We don't I have enough to form to form a conclusion, to right? Without enough evidence. Yes. Um, as we approach Cord, uh, Olwyn looks through her scope to see if there's any, uh, welcome party. Alright, you look through the scope, uh, roll perception. I mean, I'm so glad I have a good modifier. Well, um, you're looking through the, so you're looking through your scope and, um, you don't, it's like you don't see much, but you don't think you see anything trying to pop out and get you. It looks clear. Uh, Flint, hide the plants just in case. Okay. Oh, uh. I thought we didn't repair, repair it. Mm. Hmm. And people and, and people try to insist that uh, spontaneous spellcasters are worse than prepared spellcasters. I mean, why? <laughs> I mean, they technically are, but it's a splitting hairs thing. <sighs> Sorry, I was just being petty there. Anyway, I know, go. and I was being petty too. So the carriage uh, slowly moves back into the area of court and straight for the university, please, please. Yep. No pressure. You enter, you, you enter. You enter the gates. There is a little bit of a light. There, there is a light drizzle. Rain, more rain. Why? Honestly, it doesn't feel as bad. <sighs> so, all right. So, who's going to the university? I'm going well, with Flint wherever he goes. <laughs> uh well, I was gonna, I was gonna, at first, I was gonna go to the university to study the plan harder, but I do want to check one more thing with Seven and maybe like put her in a bed so she can rest. It's been a long day. So I'm going to go, I'll go university. Uh, I guess okay. I better. Seven's up. I don't suppose well, that there's. Awake? Okay. I don't suppose there's any chance that any messages are checkable right now. If, if we go looking to see if any next of kin messages arrived. Uh, Rain says, oh, it's a, uh, I could probably head over to the uh, telegraph office and, uh, pick up any messages if you guys uh, want them. I'll come with you. I'll, I'll come with you for that. There's not really much else for me to do around here. And, for, and I'd like to see the uh, doctor in the morning, so um, I'll, head, I'll head with um, Fl uh, Flint and Oshimi. Uh, sorry, Flint and Olwen. Olwen, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, uh... I uh, probably should go to the car shares ASAP. This doesn't seem like something that should be delayed. It's awfully late. Are you sure bothering them at this hour is a good idea? No, but this has been something that has been haunting them for years. They've been deprived of their daughter, had her locked up, and even when she's free, she's had this over their head for so long. Honestly, as soon as they hear even the slightest news that their daughter might have been innocent, 
I know if I were in their position, I wouldn't want any delay. So now you're considering the feelings of others, hmm? <laughs> He's been better! <laughs> no, Hoshimi has a smirk on her face. Suppose all I can't right. be taught. So, um, you're all looking around, so I'm not I'm not gonna ask you to roll uh, perception checks for this because this is kind of obvious, but you're all looking around and you notice that there's uh, quite a few guards mobilizing. Not around you, but they seem to be running past you. What? What's going on? Is there some kind of security <sighs> lockdown or something? A lieutenant. Hey, what's what's going on? Oh, uh, we, we were. R Rames, you gotta come with. L Lieutenant, you gotta come with me. We got something's happened. What's happened? The rest of us can fight. We could help two of your letters. It's less that we need. It's less that we need people to fight, and more that we need people not to uh, uh, disturb the scene. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I can volunteer to examine if 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 need be, sir. Um, he he looks toward he looks towards Lieutenant Rames, and he holds up his hands. I trust. I trust them. All right. I can I can give them permission to examine the scene. It's like especially that one right there. He points to the he points to Olwen. That one's oh. that. that 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 one is it's our job. I am Corporal Detective Olwen Edgeworth of the Directian Police Force at your service. Alright, uh, we got to we got to go, come on. Alright. Alright, Olwen, let's go. Mm. Ah! Flint, get seven to the get seven to the university. This is a good and she leans into Flint. This is a good distraction. Get over there and get the plant ready. Don't do anything without me, okay? Abo, inspect to your heart's content. I'll take care of everything here. All right, Hoshimi could, and Sean looks down to Hoshimi. All right, Hoshimi, could I have? Could I talk to you for just a second before I leave? Make it fast. Will do. If the captains or the other guards force us to act quickly, I want us to be prepared have a plan to get Kush, to get the Kushes and Picria out of the city ASAP in case we don't have the slow investigation method available to us. wanted to say this to you now because you can deliver the rest to the rest of the party if you so choose, and I didn't want to say this in front of Lieutenant Rames in case he decides to go all by the book on us. Okay. Get going. I'm not choosing that as my first option. Okay, yeah. And yes, Charlin is gonna make his way to the Kosher house. Okay. Um Uh what about what about Civil Seven and Hoshi? Um Hoshimi just decides to kind of wait because she's still dancer, she's still not officer. All right, so uh, and seven is going to the uh, is going to the university. And Sybil. And Sybil, where do you where are you going? I assume that I'd probably be better serving at the university if there's anything for me to do. Well, yeah. Um, Unless there was something else you guys had in mind. Uh. It's your, your character, your choice. Up to you. Uh, let's see, you want to come to the crime scene? Yeah, this, I mean, I'm going to laugh if, like, there are, if there's, like, spirits or something, and we I, need your help. I just, well, <laughs> excuse me, an actual investigator. That, that could work. Very well, then. I'll, All right. I'll go with Olwyn. All come right. with me, Very. and we'll be in a world of sheer imagination. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are follow you guys are following the guards PM and you. All right. All right. All right. So, uh 
You guys are following the guards, and Shylin, as you're walking towards the Karshera estate, you're you're looking over your shoulder, and your heart is slowly dropping into the pit of your stomach when you realize that you and the guards are walking in the same direction. Right, right. Yeah, he's picking up the pace. Um, so, uh, excuse me, what exactly is the, uh, emergency? It's, it, I wasn't given, I wasn't given any pertinent information, but it was told us that we need to go to the Karshera state because there's a crime scene. Another and way. Now Shailin is breaking out into a full-blown sprint. He's going full on parkour to get there as quickly as possible. Uh, uh, Ray, uh, 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 Shailen, Shailen, please, remember what happened last time you t decided to blitz past the guard? Yeah, this time though, Shailen's not trying to go directly at the guards, he's more like trying to use, like, on the on the rooftops, over fences, basically get there as quickly as possible, through, possible, without actually engaging anyone. All right, so uh, you're the first one there, and you see that uh, the guards have kind of uh, cordoned off the Karshar estate. And you're looking around, and it doesn't seem like anything's wrong on from the outside. It's like the place doesn't seem to be burning down. It doesn't seem like uh, you don't see any blood anywhere, as far as you can see. Just uh, a couple curious citizens are trying to Try and peek through the window, trying to peek through the windows from where they are as good as well as they can, but they can't really get a good read. And from where, from your little point in the rooftops, you can't really fit find what it is either. You do see that there's someone. Uh, yeah, you do see that there's someone in the study, and there's a couple of figures moving around the study, but you can't tell who they are. Okay, Shaman's actually gonna go down and approach. Gonna go down and approach the guards. All right, and the, the guards uh, kind of move to it. So it's like, it's like sorry, it's a, this is a crime scene. No civilians allowed. Uh, Lieutenant Rames sent me on ahead. Uh, any, are there any casualties? What's the situation? Uh, roll persuasion? Or diplomacy, sorry. Yep. Finn had his hand raised, so... Yeah, Finn, what, what were you saying? Oh, um... Me and Seven, um, should we do a side chat thing, or will we, can we have time to actually act out the scene that I wanted to do with her? Uh, I think we can act Oh, out you thing. gotta be kidding me! Okay, Why? Why? Why is the Nat Ones always in the important roles when I'm actually trying to do something useful and not just... Uh... Welcome to the club, my friend. Right, so they look I know! At... Yeah. So they're looking at so they're looking at you and say, yeah, it's easy to say that you're friend, yeah, you're friends with so with someone high up, but we don't. And that's when everyone comes up and says, and says, um, actually, he's telling the truth. But uh, there's no there's no way you could have known that. There's no way you could have known that, Sergeant. It's not it's not your fault. It's a and then he's a, and then he actually whispers over to the, into Shylan's ear. Thank you for not blitzing past them this time wouldn't have helped this time, and we're not in a do-or-die scenario. Alright, All right, let the- that's right, let them in. It's, a, uh, it's, a. Uh, we're, we're going in to help assess the situation, and I'm bringing them with us because all- they are experts. But I was serious about my question before, officer. Who's dead? Who's alive? Who's injured? Unfortunate, unfortunately, I don't know. That information is uh, not been given to me. Concerning, but thank you. Rames at Rames nods. Yes, that's very concerning. Let's go. Um. Yep. Owen. Owen flashes her badge, and she, um, and she pulls uh, Sybil closer to her. Uh. Uh, Corporal Detective Owen Edgeworth, Department, uh, here as an advisor, as well as Sybil Endrax, a uh, specialist in the occult. 
you'll excuse us. All right, so you were so yeah. How rain, badly rain, did rain, you just want to do through. that? So yeah, rain uh, uh, slowly lets you through. <laughs> uh, and, and Adrian just looks at one of the, one of the, sar uh, one of the sergeant, Bob. Uh, <laughs> Can we fire him, please? 